I'm old enough to remember this, uh, uh, this uh, detective on, on TV. I, I, I don't know when the show ended up, around 2003 or four, something like that. Peter Falk. How many remember Peter Falk? How many know the, the part he played? Columbo, right? I mean, it looked like he slept in everything that he wore, you know? He, he slept in his car. I mean, that junky old car. But I, I, if you remember Columbo, he would, he, he'd be looking into a situation and, and, and uh, you know, he'd, he'd be talking in riddles and, you know, kind of, sort of, kind of exposing some things. And he'd go, okay, well, we'll talk some other time. And how many of you know he'd be headed out the door and he'd turn and what would he do? He'd say, uh, just one more thing. <laughs> right? Or, or he'd say something like, you know, you know, there's something that bothers me here. <laughs> he always had a way to, to say, uh, you know, listen, there, there's, a, there's a question and I need answers. And he had this uncanny way of, of causing you to believe you know what's going on in my life. How many of you know God's, God's aware of what's going on in your life? When I quoted that scripture a little bit earlier out of Jeremiah 33, where it says, call unto me, call unto me and I will answer you. Some of you go, well, yeah, right. I call out to him. I get nothing. It's like heaven has become uh, this, this closed universe that I have absolutely no access to because I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking and I'm not finding, I've, I'm searching and it, it's, it's not there and I'm asking questions and I'm not getting the answers. Today, I, I just call this simply looking for answers. I, I'm looking for answers. I don't, I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I'm, I am fed up with this whole COVID thing. I, I am. I'm fed up with this whole COVID thing. And some of you say, well, it's real. And some of you are sitting there saying, no, it's not. And I mean, we got people fighting over whether or not COVID-19 is actually real. Of course it's real. You know, don't, don't say dumb things, especially on social media. Of course it's real. How long, how long is it going to last? I don't know. Maybe till the first week or so of November, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Now, now, I just want to tell you, it is real. Listen, that does not detract from the fact that it's real. It is real. It is real. <laughs> I, I may have gotten in trouble with like half of the crowd just now. And, but here's the other thing. If that's the best applause I get all morning, <laughs> I'm going to be really discouraged. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. But, but listen, you're sitting here today and you want answers. I want answers. I, I, was, I was thinking about it just a few moments ago. It's, it's kind of like you, you build a home or you build a business and, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, you got, this, you got this earthquake that's headed... Not an earthquake. You got this uh, hurricane that's headed your way, and the news report, and the eye of the storm, and it, it's coming your way. And you spent your life building what you built, and all of a sudden, in just a short period of time, boom, it's gone. I mean, isn't that how life has been feeling? People have built businesses, and 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 they're just they're decimated. They built uh, financial security, and 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 it's not secure anymore. And people that are in danger of losing their homes and, and they've lost their businesses and, and they don't know what to do. And they're, listen, we go to church, we know God. I love God, don't you? I love God. I love his word. And we go for answers and it's like, just put your mask on and shut up. That's what it seems like. It seems like the answers that, that we're looking for are, are hard to find. Maybe, maybe I'm not in the right room. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 1, you know, this, this prophet, 7th century prophet, listen to what he said in, in chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. How long, O oh Lord, maybe you can relate to this, how long, O oh Lord, must I call for help, but you don't listen? 
Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you don't come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I'm surrounded by people who just love to argue and fight. <laughs> Anybody been on Facebook or Twitter lately? The law has become paralyzed. There's no justice. The wicked far outnumber the righteous. As, as I read that this week, all of a sudden I remembered in Psalm chapter 13, David, as he's rehearsing in the ear of God. Listen, he says this, I'm hurting, Lord. Will you forget me forever? <laughs> Anybody ever feel that way? God, you've forgotten who I am. Don't you remember? I'm Jerry. You love me most. <laughs> How much longer, Lord, will you look the other way when I'm in need? How much longer must I cling to this constant grief? I've endured this shaking of my soul. So how much longer will my enemy have the upper hand? It's been long enough. Take a good look at me, God, and answer me. I, I, I think it seems like the world feels this way right now. With what we've been through, what we're living through, what we're watching. And, and as, I, as I think about the turmoil, the chaos, and, and the things we've been talking about a lot over the last six months, you know, this, this, this stuff that's going on, it, it's completely unraveled. The, the social structures, the financial structures, it's almost like the scripture in the Old Testament that says, there will come a day where everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Seems like it to me. The things you put your trust in, you're no longer going to be able to trust in. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots, but I will trust in the name of the Lord my God. So there's this tension, uh, you know, where everything that seems stable is no longer stable. Things that we look to, you can't look to anymore. You're just not sure what's going on. God, how long is this going to go on? But, but see, I think there's some byproducts of this as a believer that we've got to be very careful about. There's byproducts when chaos comes. And, and I want to share some of the byproducts with you that I believe the Lord showed me to warn you about and to look in your life to see if maybe you are walking out one of these byproducts. The byproducts of chaos, the byproducts of, uh, of not getting the answers you're looking for, the byproducts of the instability, the byproducts of the insecurity. The byproducts. Byproducts, number one, when we don't hear from God, we're tempted to question His character. Now, I, I, I may not get a whole lot of amen out of this because some of you are going to locate yourself right about now. You're going you're gonna to do the Job thing. Job chapter 1. What is it? Verse 21. Uh, look it up. Read all of chapter 1 sometime and have your eyes opened, not just to what Job said, but to the actuality of what happened. How many funerals you ever been to? And Job is quoted. What, what does he do? He goes through, I mean, just a horrendous time. It was horrible. He lost everything. He lost family. He lost his, uh, his, his uh, substance. I mean, he's just in bad shape. It gets to the place he's got boils all over his body. He's got a wife that is saying, why don't you just curse God and die? Great advice. Great advice. And, and we hear it quoted at funerals, and, and maybe you have done so. The Lord has given, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That sounds very noble. It's just not true. It's not true. You say, well, of course it's true. No, read chapter 1. It's very clear. Job, listen, he didn't have the luxury of reading Job chapter 1 to find out what was really going on. So cut the guy some slack. 
He didn't understand. He didn't understand what we now understand. But here's, here's what I see as a problem. We as believers, we got the book. We can read the book. We can see what happened. And still we quote that verse as though God, is, you know, naked I came into the world and naked will I return. The Lord is given. The Lord takes away. The Lord didn't do it. Satan did it. You said, yeah, but the Bible says God gave him permission. Yeah, he'll give you permission to go to hell too. It doesn't mean it's his will. Just, just because he allows something doesn't mean he has been the author of that something. So, so listen, you, you begin to question God's character. Is he really good? All I know is Psalm 34, verse 8 says, uh, taste and see that God is a good God. Listen, if you're looking at your life right now and you say, well, this isn't good, this isn't good, this isn't good, this isn't good. I'm losing. I'm, 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 I've, I've got sickness. I've got disease. I've, I've lost all my finance. That doesn't look good to me. It is not God that did it. God didn't do it. God did not do that. And I want you to understand that when you begin to question his character, it's very difficult to go to the one that you're blaming for the help that you need. You cannot go convinced in your heart that the one that you're blaming for your trouble is the one that's going to get you out of trouble. In fact, Jesus was accused of casting out demons by the power of the devil. I mean, can you believe somebody would be that dumb to, to, to say that, Jesus, yeah, you're, you're doing this, but you're doing it by the power of the devil. I mean, how ridiculous is that? And Jesus responded to that, and he said this. He said, any kingdom that is divided against itself will not stand. So if you think God's the one that's doing it to you, and he's the one that's getting you out of it, that's a divided kingdom. So, so uh, one of the byproducts is that uh, we're tempted to question his character. I, I look it up sometime, James chapter 1, I think down around verse 26, 27. It, it, says, that, it says this, it says uh, something about, uh, anyway, how good God is. Anyway, look it up, you'll see, all right? No, it actually, it actually says this about, about God. It says, every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, listen to this, in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. I, I can sum that up this way. God and the devil will never switch places. The one that has come to steal, kill, and destroy, and the one that has come to bless your life is never going to switch places. They're never going to swap. God's not going to do what the devil does. The devil does well what the devil does. God's here to bless you, to help you, to strengthen you, to save you, to provide for you, to heal you. Come on, to bring you comfort, to bring you peace. That's what God is. That is his character. So number one byproduct is we begin to question his character. Number two, number two is we'll come to our own conclusions. When you're not getting an answer from God, you are left to your own devices and you come up with your own conclusions. Now, what do I mean by that? In 1 Kings chapter 19, we see a, a, an amazing story of the prophet Elijah. Here he has just won an amazing battle with the prophets of Baal. And they called on their gods to bring fire to consume a sacrifice. Their gods didn't answer. Elijah's God did answer. What a victory. And all the prophets of Baal were, were killed that day. And I mean, God showed up. God showed up. And it was an amazing day, right? Yeah. So the very next scene, Elijah, he's being told by Jezebel uh, that, that uh, before the day is done, she's going to kill him. And what do you find him doing? The guy that just won this amazing battle by the, by the hand of God, all of a sudden he no longer trusts God against a woman that he trusted against all the prophets of Baal. And he's running for his life. So, so here's the conclusion he comes to. Uh, two or three times he's asked, Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing out here? Because he's running, he's running from this woman who says she's going to kill him. What are you doing out here? He goes, listen, and he rehearses the reason he's there, and he finishes by saying this. He said, and I 
and now the only one left that is faithful to God. I'm the only one left. Your circumstances without an answer from God will cause you, if you're not careful, to come to your own conclusions of what's going on and why and what you need to do to get out of it. I want to tell you something. Your own conclusions are the last thing. You know, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I got to figure this out uh, on, on my own. I mean, you could insert the voice of a whiny martyr right about there. Oh, God, I'm the last one left. God, where are you? I want to tell you, that's, that's not the voice God wants us to come to him with. He said, come boldly before the throne. That's not arrogance. He didn't say come arrogantly, pridefully. He says, come boldly to my throne and make a demand of my kingdom and what I've said that I would do for you. So, so number one, uh, number, number one byproduct is, is that you'll question his character. Number two, you come to your own conclusion. Number three, we question our standing with God. And, and this, may be, this may be something many of you are struggling with. If you're watching by way online, you may be questioning your standing uh, with God. What do I mean by that? Uh, maybe he's forgotten me for a reason. You know, when I went through one of the most troubling times of my life, I was living as a very, very backslidden Christian. Because I was raised right, and I was no longer living the way I was raised. I was living as a backslidden Christian. For those of you that don't know what that means, it, it is a Baptist term, by the way. I don't know if that's true. But it just means, listen, if you're not going forward in the things of God, there's a high probability you're slipping back into some of your old ways of living and thinking and talking. And Because if you're not going forward, you're sliding back. There's no standing still in the things of God. So, so you come to the conclusion that maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just not doing the right thing and God no longer is there to help me. He's not going to answer me because of the way I've been living. I, I haven't been to church lately. <laughs> Who has? <laughs> Thank you for coming today. That's great. I, I skip my, my tithe to go away for the weekend, or I allow impure thoughts to uh, too often. Here's, here's something I believe God said to bring to you. Somehow, when God seems silent, we can include the grace that, that saved us is now the grace that is maintained by our perfection. Let me say that again. When we go through difficult times, when we go through times where it seems like heaven is closed to, uh, to our cries and we're not getting the answers, we need, God, I need an answer, and no answers are coming. Uh, and, and we come to the conclusion that our standing with God is the problem. How many of you know when, when uh, Luther nailed the thesis to the door of the church, he had come to the conclusion and wanted the church of that day to know that Ephesians chapter 2, verse uh, 8 and 9, I think it is, says, it is by grace that you are saved through faith. It's not your works, lest any man should boast. Amen? But somehow, when we're going through a tough time, we're not getting the answers we're looking for. It seems like God is silent in our lives. We come to the conclusion, the grace that is saved, that saved us, the free grace, the grace of God that saved us now has to be maintained by our works. I haven't been good enough. God doesn't want to answer me. I want you to know, no matter how you've been living, Romans chapter 8 is one of my favorite. I love Romans chapter 8. I love the whole chapter. But Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39 says, For I am convinced. Say, I am convinced. Say, I am convinced. Some of you need to say, I need to be convinced. <laughs> I am convinced that neither death or life, nor angels or principalities, not powers, things present or things to come, not height or depth or any other created thing, shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Your perfection is not what is necessary. Your attention is what is necessary. 
your attention. God wants to bring us the answers that we need. He, he, he desperately wants to speak to you. I was struggling early, earlier this week with, with the message that I needed to bring. And there was a reason why I was struggling. It was because I had the wrong message. <laughs> How many of you want to know what the wrong one was? <laughs> Maybe that's better than this one. I don't know. No. No, it's, it's good. And I, I guarantee you, it's, it's one that I will preach. And I worked on it for a few days. I just kept seeking God. And I made a bunch of notes over, over a few-day period. And, and, man, I had a great introduction. I knew exactly where to go with this. And then it was like I hit a wall. Boom. Nothing. God, okay, I got this far. Show me. Nothing. I'd, I'd, stay, I'd, I'd pray in the Spirit, nothing. I'd sit quietly, meditating on the Lord and listening to His voice, nothing. I was annoyed. But God, these are your people, it's not my problem. <laughs> not my problem. If you want to give me something, that's fine. I'll get up and twiddle my thumbs. I, I wouldn't, I'd make something up, okay? <laughs> So on Wednesday night, we had a service, sort of a service in here. It's online. Every Wednesday night's online. And we had a service in here, an encounter night. And, and we had what we call the prophetic company. They had been praying over that night. And, and it's an amazing thing. Next time we have one, I think it's in a couple of weeks, you, you, need, to, you need to tune into that. Because there's ministry, there's worship going on on this stage. And there's a pressing into an encounter with God. And people get online and they need prayer. We're able to send them to a prayer room where there are people waiting privately to pray with them. I mean, technology, it's amazing. And I opened up the service and I had already told everybody, as soon as I open up, I, I got to go back into my office because I got to hear from God. I got a message I'm preparing and I got to hear from God. I got back into my office after opening and... God spoke to me and said, you want, you want information on the message I want you to bring? I said, yeah, I sure do. He goes, get back into that service. You sit in that service and have an encounter with me. So I came back in. You know, you argue a little bit. Get thee behind me, Satan. He said, no, it's not Satan talking. It's me. I'm too busy. So I came back in here and I sat right there and and I'll tell you, I, uh, the worship was going on and, and the words and, and words from God. And, and I just sat there, just, just listening to God. And then whew, this download of the Spirit into my spirit like that. And I began to write. And I had everything that I needed to bring to you within a couple of minutes from the heart of God. See, I'm, I'm not trying to press you. I'm not trying to say you need to do exactly what I did. I'm just saying that sometimes it is not, he's never looking for our perfection, but what he wants is our attention. Come on, our attention. He wants us to obey. If he says do it, just do it. If he says go there, just go there. If he says sit down and pardon all the kids that are in here, you're not supposed to say shut up. But if he says sit down and shut up for a while, then you need to just sit down and zip the lip. Most of our prayer time is a, a monologue. It's not a dialogue. It's a complaint session. So I, say, I wish you hadn't come back in the auditorium that night. This is, this is kind of harsh. So I believe my assignment this week is summed up with these three things. Marching orders for you, all right? Because I don't know about you, but I want my breakthrough. You want your breakthrough? How many of you want your breakthrough? If I judged how many people want their breakthrough by the response, I'd say not too many people want their breakthrough. How many of you want your breakthrough? <laughs> yeah. So, so if you really want your breakthrough, I need to remind you of some things. Because Pastor Darrell had a word. He said, listen, there are some... I'll just say it this way, some downloads from the Spirit of God that he wants to bring because he's got assignments. 
There, there were days that God told me to do things and I did not want to do it. And he said, if you don't do it, I'm going to find somebody else to do your assignment. And all of a sudden, it's like I woke up and I said, no, I don't want to be replaced by anybody. I want to do what you've called me to do. And he wants to speak to you. This has nothing to do with, I want to hear from God how to end this COVID thing. That's, that's got nothing to do with this. But every one of us have been personally affected by this, this pandemic and all of the stuff, uh, true and untrue, real and not real, reaction and overreaction. We've all been affected by this whole thing. And we all need answers. Because every one of us are in different places in this, in this, whole, uh, uh, this, this whole scenario that we're living through. And, and we need answers. So here's some good news. Are you ready? Are you ready? Where's my breakthrough? Number one, I want you to know that God by His Spirit will reveal things to you. I want you to know that. John chapter 16, verse 13. You say, well, pastor, that's pretty obvious. No, it's not obvious to some people because they're pretty convinced that God's not going to speak to you about what your need is, what your situation is. Jesus said this, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth and he will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Sometimes we say we want to know things, but then we spend almost no time with the one who knows things. We say we want to know things, but we spend no time with the one who knows everything. The spirit of truth. Listen, the spirit of truth no longer lives in temples made with the hands of men, but now he dwells in this temple of God. Know ye not that you are the temple of God. You have the spirit abiding on the inside of you. You don't have to go to anybody for your answers. You have the answer giver living on the inside of you. It's why at the beginning of this message I said, we're not going on. Let's just stop and pray in the Spirit for a moment. You know, just doing that for a couple of moments can unlock the answers you need. Because if you, by your, by your Spirit, is speaking to the Holy Spirit that knows all the answers, man, you can get an understanding a whole lot quicker that way. Amen? So I just want you to know, I want you to know that the God who knows everything wants to reveal by His Spirit everything you need to know. You have to believe it, though. You've got to believe it. Come on, amen? You've got to believe it. Okay, number, number two. Where's my breakthrough? God will give you wisdom if you want it. He'll give you wisdom if you want it. Hey, listen, knowledge is good. How many, how many of you know knowledge is an accumulation of information? You know, a lot of people go to church and they're satisfied with the knowledge they get when they come to church. Knowledge is not going to help you the way God wants you to be helped. Wisdom is what you need so that you have the correct application of the knowledge that you've accumulated. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom is the, it, it, it's from the mind of God and it's the correct application of the knowledge that you've accumulated. Knowledge says, I know what a box knife is. Wisdom says, don't try to cut through, uh, through drywall while the drywall is laying on your lap. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> Knowledge is knowing what the Word of God says. Wisdom is knowing when to say it, when to apply it, when to give it. You know, sometimes, you know, you hear somebody talk about the problem they're going through and you've got exactly the scripture they need to hear. You need the wisdom whether or not it's time to speak or not. You say, well, of course it is. The word of God is good anytime. They, not, they may not be ready to hear it yet. You need to pray for wisdom that they're going to be able to hear what it is you have to say. 
We, we need wisdom. James chapter 1 says this. James chapter 1 in verse 13, when the Spirit, of, or no, wait a minute. James chapter 1 verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5 says this. If you need wisdom, and I love the way the New Living Translation says it. It says, ask our generous God and he will give it to you and he will not rebuke you for asking. One translation says he will not belittle you for needing to ask. When was the last time you literally did that? Just said, Father, I need wisdom in this situation. I, I need to know what is in the mind of my Father God. What is in the mind of my God? How I deal with this situation. His wisdom may take you down a road that your knowledge would have never taken you down. His wisdom may give you a solution that your knowledge would have never put together. You would have never said A plus B equals C that way. Your, his wisdom will take you down roads that will get you where you need to be. Amen? When was the last time you asked him for wisdom? Amen? When was the last time you asked him for wisdom? And then the last one is this. Where's my breakthrough? God reveals hidden things. Everybody say hidden things. Everybody say hidden things. See, he will reveal things to you. That was number one. But he wants to reveal hidden things. You know, it's a whole lot easier to find something when it's in plain sight. Everybody, if you can't say amen, just say, duh. <laughs> but, but it really isn't duh. Because how many of you know there have been things that you couldn't find, but it was right in plain sight? But it's a whole lot easier to find things that are in plain sight. It's a whole lot more difficult to find the hidden things. Because there are things that are hidden. The, the Bible in a couple of places speak of, speaks of mystery. 1 Corinthians 14. You know, when you pray in the Spirit, you're praying out mysteries. Mysteries are not things that God has hidden from you. They are things that He has preserved for you. He's preserved them for you. He wants to reveal them to you. He's not hiding. God is not playing hide and seek with his will, his plan, his purpose, his, his agenda. He's not playing hide and seek. But he's not going to reveal it to people that, uh, that, uh, that just want the easy way out. He'll reveal the hidden things. In, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 1 through 14, I'm not going to read it. It's not up on the screen, but if you know the story, Daniel needed an answer from God. This, this was some serious stuff. He needed an answer from God. So what did he do? He set himself. Everybody say set himself. He set himself to hear from God. He set himself to hear from God, and he, he fasted. He set himself apart to hear from God. He got quiet before God, and he was fasting during this time. And then we see how the story unfolds that was revealed to Daniel uh, in, in the 21st day. The angel of the Lord was coming to bring the message to Daniel. What God wanted Daniel to know was coming the first day he prayed, but there was a war in the heavenlies. It says that the prince of the power of Persia a type and shadow, the, the principalities and powers in that second heaven. It says that they withstood me. They withstood me. I couldn't get the message to you. But then God sent help. He sent a warrior angel, and that warrior angel came and took care of the prince of the power of Persia, kept him busy, fought him off so that the message could come to Daniel. And he says, I have come because of your words. I have come because you set yourself to hear from God. In fact, I started coming the very first day. This is what happened, but now I'm here. I'll tell you what, you're never going to press into those kind of hidden things unless you're willing to do the hard work of pressing into God no matter how long it takes. If the only thing you'll spend time is the time, you know, it's like, okay, I need to pray about this real quick. When was the last time you prayed about some of the tough things that you're going through? I mean, literally set yourself apart. Prayer, fasting, seeking the face of God. There are some hidden things in your life that God is not wanting to keep from you. He is preserving them for you. But I'll tell you what, sometimes there is a price to pay in our flesh to hear the voice of the Spirit in our spirit. Listen, 
God is not going to interrupt your busyness. He's not going to interrupt your agenda to get his agenda revealed in your life. He's not. He's not. But I'm just I'm just making up my mind that I I need I need some answers. And it's like we've we've you know God has been so good and he's used us to reach so many people and and to you know thank God build a building I couldn't care less about buildings it's just a place where the body of Christ can gather amen yeah. you know but but he 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 did this for us amen yeah. I mean I'm in my 37th year pastoring this church and it just seems like so many things have like been unraveled some things needed to be unraveled it's kind of like you spent all this time building a business or building a house, and now, now this hurricane comes in in, a, in just a few moments. It's wiped out. God, I need answers. I, I want answers. But if you've already made up your mind what the answer needs to be, you're not going to hear what the answer will be. There's nothing in Scripture that says God has God has a responsibility to come into agreement with you. Our responsibility is to get in agreement with Him. Amen? Amen? Are you in the right house? Come on, let's stand together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. How many remember what I read near the beginning out of Habakkuk? How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help? But you don't listen. Violence is ever... I mean, isn't that a great way to start a sermon? So encouraging. But see, if you stop in verse 4... And you don't go on to verse 5, because verse 5 says this. It says, look among the nations and see. Be surprised and full of wonder, for I am doing something in your days that you would not believe if you were told. My friend, these months have not been a setback. They are a set up. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is not a setback. It's a setback if you interpret it that way. If you stay in your own conclusion, this is not a setback. This is a set up for what God is about to do in the earth. You wouldn't even believe it. You won't even believe how amazing that I have planned for you. Say, I'm in. Say, I'm in. But every one of you have to play a part in this. So, well, Pastor, I can't wait to hear what, what you're going to do. Yeah, you know what? I'm doing what I do. And I know I got more to do. But every single one of you, I believe what God is doing is he's bringing the body of Christ into a fullness. He's bringing us into a fullness. Why do we exist? So that we can have an encounter with God and be fully engaged in our kingdom purpose. If you say, well, I just want to go to church. The answers you're looking for are probably not going to come. God is not aligning with you. You need to align with Him. God is not fasting and praying so that He can figure out what to tell you. <laughs> He's waiting for you to set yourself apart because He has absolute divine wisdom that is in his mind 
Jesus said in John 16, he said, in the spirit of truth, he won't speak on his own. He won't. He's going to reveal to you what's in the mind of God. Holy Spirit, I need to know what God is showing you about me. Pray that way. Amen? Come on, amen? You won't even believe it. Galatians 6, 9, don't get tired of doing what's right. At the right time, we're going to reap if we don't quit. Amen? I think a companion verse to Habakkuk chapter... Uh, chapter uh, 1 there, or chapter whatever it is, chapter 2 or whatever, is 1 Corinthians 2 9. I hasn't seen nor ear heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love I, I, I gotta tell you, that's his character, man. He's, he's prepared amazing things for this church.